Hey guys, welcome to MMA Insider where we talk about anything and everything related to MMA. In this video, we'll look at the history between Nate Diaz and the UFC when it comes to the use of cannabis. The Diaz brothers are well renowned for their vicious hitting, amazing jujitsu, and extreme endurance. However, the duo has also become well known and appreciated for their love of the cannabis plant. The brothers have pushed their message even further by openly consuming cannabis in public places, frequently getting in trouble for it. Nick Diaz has publicly acknowledged that he goes for cannabis when he feels beaten down or when his attention is lacking, implying that he uses cannabis as a rehabilitation agent. Cannabis has long been prohibited in competitive sports. Nate Diaz's older brother, Nick Diaz, was suspended from the USC for five years and fined $165,000 in 2015 for consuming marijuana despite having a California medical license. Although THC, which is the main intoxicating compound in cannabis, remains banned by WADA, USADA, and other anti-doping organizations, regulators have since lifted the ban on CBD. Many MMA fighters are now embracing CBD as a natural, safe, and legal approach to aid their recovery as a result of this and the overall growth of CBD's popularity. CBD, in particular, has provided MMA athletes with a great pain treatment alternative to opioids. Opioids, in contrast to CBD, are highly addictive and have a slew of bad side effects. Furthermore, they lack many of CBD's significant health advantages, such as the capacity to speed up healing by lowering inflammation and maybe even aid with brain damage. CBD is an abbreviation for cannabidiol, one of over 100 cannabinoids found in the cannabis sativa plant. These natural chemicals are responsible for cannabis's numerous health advantages. Most people have heard of tetrahydrocannabinol, the cannabinoid that causes the powerful marijuana high. CBD, unlike THC, has no psychotropic properties. Simultaneously, it has several therapeutic impacts on inflammation, pain, anxiety, sleep, and other common health difficulties. CBD is an ideal supplement for MMA athletes because of this combination. As it happens, MMA is one of the most physically demanding sports there is, with fighters frequently suffering from pain, concussions, and other brain injuries, discomfort, injured ligaments, and a high level of inflammation. The majority of injuries happen during normal training, not during fights. These effects not only wear down the body and hinder warriors from fully healing, but they also make it difficult to sleep. As a result, fighters struggle to give their all in the gym while still going about their daily lives. CBD solves all of these difficulties, including improved recuperation between workouts and improved sleep. In most situations, the UFC no longer penalizes competitors for taking marijuana, signaling a significant shift in the organization's anti-doping policy. The world's largest MMA promoter revealed that it no longer is concerned about positive carboxy-THC testing, the psychoactive element in cannabis, unless it feels a competitor to use it to purposely improve performance. Other cannabinoids generated naturally from marijuana are no longer illegal. Although the UFC does not allow competitors to compete while under the influence of cannabinoids, Jeff Nowitzki stated that the company acknowledges that MMA fighters frequently use marijuana for pain treatment or relaxation. Fighters who support authorized competitive marijuana usage have previously claimed that relaxing the UFC's anti-marijuana policies may lead to a decrease in the use of antidepressants or more addictive pain drugs. However, it doesn't stop there because the US Anti-Doping Agency reportedly changed its guidelines in response to Diaz. According to Jeff Nowitzki, the UFC president of athlete and health performance, it all started with Diaz's use of a CBD vape pen during the UFC 202 post-fight press conference last August. Jeff Nowitzki told Joe Rogan during an episode of the JRE MMA Show podcast about the Nate Diaz rule. At the time, the rule was the in-competition period where CBD was prohibited lasted until four hours after the conclusion of the fight. He was clearly within that time period. So, USADA contacted me and said, hey, technically, Nate was in violation of this. And I said, look, this was not the intent of the rule. The WADA prohibited list, which we follow, took it completely off starting in 2018. And that was the case before. They could do it in training, it was only prohibited during competition, so weigh in day and fight day. Now, it's been completely taken off the list, and it's okay to use it any time. Now, basically the rule is in competition period ends with a collection immediately after the fight, or USADA has a reasonable amount of time after the fight. USADA CEO Travis Tigart said, The goal of the UFC anti-doping program is to protect the rights of clean athletes by deterring intentional cheaters and holding those who choose to dope accountable in a fair and effective way. These amended rules are aimed at this, 
and to continue our focus on preventing the intentional cheating, not to unnecessarily punish athletes for behavior that does not impact the fairness or safety of the competition. Diaz was recently visited by USADA ahead of his welterweight bout at UFC 279 versus Kamzat Chemaev. Diaz went live while smoking marijuana in front of a representative from the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency attempting to obtain a urine sample. In the past, the Nevada State Athletic Commission punished Nate Diaz's older brother Nick Diaz for five years in 2015 after he tested positive for marijuana metabolites. What do you guys think? Is it fair to punish fighters for using CBD which helps them recover or should we go for a completely clean sport? Comment your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. We will make sure to keep you updated.